God, simply because you deserve it. God, you've done so much for us, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to thank you for everything that you've done for us. God, we just want to give you glory, honor, because you deserve it. God, we lift your name on high in this place today so that somebody that doesn't know you, God, will find you on today. God, we ask that you allow your anointing to fall afresh in this place. Allow your Holy Spirit to reign in this place on today. Father, empty me out and fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Let your word will go forth with power and clarity. That the people will see you and not me, God. And we declare it done in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Amen and amen. Give God some praise in this place today. Praise him like you know he's God in this place today. Hallelujah. I don't plan to be before you long. Turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs. This is a very familiar scripture. Most of you know it. For those of you that don't, you can turn to chapter 3. One verse of scripture on today. I just want to encourage somebody. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Give you just a few more minutes. Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 5. As a matter of fact, we can probably all read it together. Just verse 5. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Somebody needs to repeat that because somebody in here today is having a problem and you're not sure how this problem is going to work out. But I just came to tell you today that all you got to do is trust in the Lord. Somebody should have been shouting right there. All you got to do is trust in the Lord. With all your heart. And lean not into your own understanding. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as you give God some grace. Hallelujah. When we turn on our TVs, when we pull up our Instagrams and log into our Facebooks, it's not uncommon to see images of death, darkness, and destruction. Mothers are killing their children and fathers are killing their sons. Children are killing their parents. Black boys and girls are being shot down and gunned down by the police at alarming rates. And when that's not happening, they're shooting themselves at an alarming rate. You can barely send your children to school without fear of a mass school shooting. Diseases are ravaging the human race. Cancer, HIV, diabetes, and the list goes on and on. And it looks like the world is going to hell in a handbasket. My grandmother used to say that the Bible speaks of these times, wars and rumors of wars. But I came to tell somebody that despite what it looks like, despite what you're going through, Despite what you see on TV and on Facebook, I'm just beseeching you and encouraging you today to trust in the Lord. I want you to wake up every morning and just look at the look up to the sky and say, Lord, I'm gonna trust you no matter what. No matter how bad my situation looks and no matter how bad I feel, I'm gonna trust you on today. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, to, 5, 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Well, I know that somebody out there is asking, well, preacher, how do I trust in the Lord? How do I trust in the Lord when I open my front door and there are drugs being sold on every corner? How do I trust in the Lord when I send my children to school and I'm not sure if they're going to come home? How do I trust in the Lord when I barely have money to put food on my table? How do I trust in the Lord when I've gone to the doctor and he said I only have six months to live? How do I trust in the Lord when I wake up every morning and my husband didn't come home? How do I trust in the Lord and I call on the phone and I can't find my children. But I came to tell you today that no matter how bad your situation looks, no matter how bad you might be feeling, all you got to do is put your trust in the Lord. Trust in it with all your heart. Don't depend on yourself. Well, I hear somebody saying, well, Peter, you said all that, but then I need you to tell me exactly how do I trust in the Lord. Well, the first thing
thing you got to do is believe on his word. We believe on everything else except for the word of God. We believe the news reports. We even believe Facebook reports. We believe Instagram reports. We believe phone calls that we get of gossip reports. We believe on everything except the word of the Lord. But if you're going to trust in the Lord, you have to believe on his word. Believe him when he said that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said that I'll supply every one of your needs. And I don't know about you, but he's done it for me in the past. And I know he'll do it for you. All you got to do is trust him and believe on his word. Well, somebody's still a little bit confused. And I told you I wasn't going to hold you long. We're going to get right to it. They said, well, Pastor, I believe in his word I you know I, I I know that his word is true but sometimes I still have a difficult time trying to figure out this trust thing you know it can get a little rough sometimes well if you look at the scripture it says trust in the Lord with all your heart well some people say that heart thing is a little touchy it's a little it's a, it's a tricky situation but let me make it easy for you in order to trust in the Lord with all your heart you need to hide the word of the Lord in your heart Oh, somebody looking at me like they're crazy. What do you mean, preacher, hide the word? Well, if you study the word of the Lord and get it in your heart, anytime that Satan comes up against you, when the enemy comes against me like a flood, you can reach down in your heart and pull out a word. You can tell him, for I know that all things work together for good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. When Satan is on your track, you can Oh, my God. 
example. Yeah, Daniel's good. He's a he's a good example, but I need somebody else. Well, I got three friends called the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They threw them in the fire furnace because they wouldn't bow to the king. They said, that's all right. I'm still not going to bow. They threw them in the furnace. And it was hot in there, y'all. Your own understanding. 
God is a God that never fails. And there's no situation that's too tough. No situation that's too big. He said, cast all of your cares on me because I care for you. And all you got to do is trust that when you give it to him, you don't have to take it back. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. If you give it to him, he will fix it. And it's done. Stand to your feet. The doors of the church are now open. Time is filled with swift transition. Y'all know that one.
pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together today, God, and to hear a word from you. And Lord, we're asking that in this moment, if there was somebody that needed to give their lives to you, God, maybe they were afraid or unsure, God, give them another chance. God, keep them as they go forward this week, God, and allow them the opportunity to come back and to put their heart in their hand, in your hand. Lord, we love you and we honor you. We magnify you right now and declare it done. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Somebody give God praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah.